Chelsea Football Club beat Spurs 4-1 with Nicholas Jackson getting a hat-trick, but everyone still wants a new striker. David Ornstein comes out with amazing quotes that basically tell us Ivan Tony is not the right age or profile of what Chelsea are trying to get. What? And more importantly, I found the craziest statistic, a statistic that will blow your mind. Chelsea are polar opposites, home and away. I'll explain it to you, we'll break it down. Honestly, the way we play away from home, we're title contenders. We are up there with everyone. At home, starts to looking ugly. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Kafka View, Brad Dukhi. It's the day after we absolutely smashed Spurs. Well, that's what 4-1 suggests. A lot of people want to be negative. A lot of people don't want to take the positives away from the game. I'm not going to be one of them. Look, there is a lot to take away from the game in the sense that we scored four goals, we got three points, and more importantly, we made a statement victory. It's something that is important for Pochettino to get off his belt. And the team is going in the right direction. It wasn't perfect, but it got the job done. Before we get started, I need you lot to do me a massive favor. Hit the like button. We're aiming for a thousand likes. If you're new, subscribe as well. It's the best way you guys can support the channel. And in the pinned comment is my TikTok account. Go follow me there. All football related content over there. But let's move on with the story. Before we get started on the fallout from yesterday's game, I think it's very important that we talk about what David Ornstein said in his interview in America. He was on a live TV show and the discussion around Chelsea and the striker came up. You know, that conversation always comes up. And he said, Chelsea at this moment in time aren't as high. He doesn't think, he doesn't think, that's the key word. He doesn't think are as high on Ivan Tony as everyone else is suggesting. And is due to the age and the profile of the individual. So he's nowhere near high up the list like everyone else is saying. And then he also started stating they're trying to look for a world-class striker, a world beater. My question is, what the, what stops Ivan Tony from being a world beater and not the right age or profile? Profile-wise, we need a striker that can play by himself up top, someone that is proven to be a great goal scorer in the Premier League or any other major league around the world. Ivan Tony, in my opinion, ticks that. 24 league goals last year for Brentford tells me he can score goals in abundance. The eye test tells me he's more than competent. And more importantly, I think his personality watching his interviews, like sit down long interviews, really identifies that this individual believes his own hype. And for me, I like that. I want my striker to feel like he's the best. He even actively said, wherever I go, I want to be the main man. I'm not going to play second fiddle. I'm not going to sit on a bench. I'm going to play. And for me, I need that amount. The age, 27 years old, turning 28, going into the prime of his career. Guys, this team needs experience. I'm, I'm tired of repeating. For me, the level between Broya, Jackson, and Tony is not comparable. I think Tony is ready now. I'm not saying go and spend 100 million on him. I'm not saying go spend 80 million. But I think Chelsea ruling him out based on of his age and that he's a incorrect profile, I think that's nonsense. I think that's excuses. But we know these lot aren't money averse. We know they're not scared to spend money. We know that these lot, if needed, will put their money where their mouth is. We've got Case in Point, Enzo Fernandez, Moises Caicedo. They've broken the record on numerous occasions. We've got ballers in this club due to them spending money. I don't know what that means. People are getting gassed. They're saying Victor Osimhen is coming to Chelsea. I would love that. Don't get me wrong. I would absolutely adore that. I don't see it though. At this moment in time, I just don't see it. A lot of fallout has happened after the game yesterday. Um, a lot of individuals have been extremely positive in the media for Spurs. And what I'm going to say is, how the hell can all of us be extremely positive about individuals, in my opinion, that lost 4-1? Their manager played an absurd high line. Their manager absolutely set them up to fail. The reality is, anyone that's plays Chelsea, they know, put a deep block, ask Chelsea to break you down. Chelsea crumble, Chelsea panic, and Chelsea just don't unlock defences. So the reality is, are Chelsea even capable of unlocking a defence? So do not play that suicide high line. And that's exactly what they did. They played a high line nearly on the halfway line where we had four players offside, and Chelsea just were not able to, in my opinion, open up the game. And yesterday's game, I did a match review, so if any of you want to watch it, it'll be pinned at the end. Go and watch it. A lot of people enjoyed it. They said it was very honest and open. But high level, what I think is, Chelsea had three, there was three spells in the game. First 15, first 12, Spurs dominated, absolutely the better team. From minute like 15, all the way to the 12 minutes added on in the first half, Chelsea dominated that game. When it was 11 v 11, or when it was 10 v 11. Then Chelsea got another red card, and game got absolutely lost their shape. Like, it, Chelsea literally were causing their own problems. They didn't know how to deal with it. This team was absolutely panicking. But what I don't understand is, Ainge is get, getting way too much um, plaudits. 
or plaudits are you giving him? Because the reality is Pochettino controlled his team. Pochettino's team didn't get red cards. Pochettino's team didn't have favourable calls from VAR. There weren't no, no favourable. Reese James wasn't a red card. Romero should have been sent off twice. Udogi should have been sent off twice. And more importantly, I think Chelsea's goal for Caicedo, oh, it's a little bit debatable if that one gets ruled out. That's just my personal opinion. And the reality is VAR didn't change this game. Chelsea were in this match consistently. For, for the period when it was 11 v 11. There was a period where we peppered them, absolutely peppered them. They didn't have a shot on target. We had seven shots all together. And I think we had like 70% of the ball and we were cramming them in. It was a matter of time until we broke them. And I think they panicked. I think they're not used to what's going on. I think they realized, oh crap, we're actually the favorites to win this game against Chelsea. And Chelsea's boys stepped up and I'm really proud of both of them. I do think there are a lot of learning experiences to take from this game because we're nowhere near as great as we think we are. And there are some elements that I didn't like. For example, after the game, there's a photo that's been taken, right? It's all the players sitting there. I respect it. Take your photo. It's memories. Don't post it. And the reason I say don't post it, I sound miserable, right? We got nothing to celebrate. We're 10th. You, when you're in title con contention, when you're in top four, when you're going into a cup final, when it's a momentous occasion, you celebrate. You take your photos, you post it, you get gassed. At the moment, what do we have to be gassed about? Let's be honest, last week, we lost to Brentford. The week before, 2-0 two, two up against Arsenal, dropped the points. And that, like, it's just, read the room. That's what I'm gonna say, self-awareness. There's so many players in that picture that I love. And I really want them to have a good mentality. I've been listening to the John Obi Mikel podcast and I hear Frank Lampard and I hear uh, what's called John Terry there and John Obi Mikel just talking about like, oh, it's just the mentality that we had to have there's no way Jose wouldn't come back to come down from his office for a few days. And for me, it's like, I want that in my club again. And maybe it's the nostalgia of, oh my God, we were elite. I want to be elite again. That's just the reason. Finally, those of you that have stuck around to see this statistic that absolutely blew my mind. I did not realize this statistic, but we've had 11 games in the Premier League. So now we've got a little bit of a sample size, right? Six games at home, five games away. Chelsea have picked up 10, that is at, away from home. 10 points out of 15. We lost to West Ham, we lost to West Ham, we drew with Bournemouth, and we won the other three against Fulham, Burnley, and Spurs. Our, we are second, or no, third, we have a game in hand on a away record. Like if games were only played outside of the uh, Stamford Bridge, we'd be third. Like, so our away records, way at home, we've got five points from a possible 18. And that's where the problem kicks in. I do not know whether it's the pitch at Stamford Bridge, whether it's the anxiety from the fans going on to the players, or whether it's just the pressure of playing at Stamford Bridge. The pressure of teams coming and saying, we're not giving up points. But the thing is, I don't know why teams respect us. You know, it's been 15 months, bro. Come play us a little bit. But the thing is, the formula's there. Like, if you look at it, we drew with Luton, we drew with, Ars uh, we drew with Liverpool and Arsenal. Okay, fair enough, good points. Some would say, I think we should have won both games. Luton, we beat, that's the five. Brentford, Villa, losses, Forest, lot. Serious teams don't lose games like that. Like, that's just my personal opinion. I don't know what you guys think. Do you think I'm being a little bit harsh? Do you think the sample size is too small? I think there's work to do, right? And it starts for me with Manchester City. Beat Manchester City, then after the international break, we got a new cost. You go to St. James's Park, you make a statement, get a draw with Man City or beat Man City, and then you go to St. James's Park, you make a statement, you're like two points off top four or two points off top, top five. You're literally right behind Newcastle. Let's do that. Let's get behind the boys. I think a lot of content creators right now are frustrated. I get it. We're all frustrated. I think a lot of us just don't understand what's going on with the Chelsea that we know. But I don't think being hypercritical about every little detail is the way to go. Because yesterday, the only important thing was three, three points, right? And we got it. And then we got Jackson getting a hat-trick. Even though it was the worst hat-trick I've ever seen in my life, considering the fact that he could have scored six. But let's try to take some positives away. I've just been too negative this year, honestly. That's just my personal opinion. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts. Peace out. I'm out. Have a nice day.